In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, the Man. As we are in the, in the Holy 50 days, we talk a lot and we learn about life post-resurrection. As if the resurrection of Christ and also of us, because we have risen with him, should not be the same as before. And this is the sense that we get from the readings of the Sunday. So the first Sunday, it, it was about the faith. And we talked about the story of Thomas who demanded a personal encounter with the risen Lord. And, and, and this is number one lesson is that Christ's resurrection is not an event that we observe from a distance. It is not something that we watch, we hail, we say bravo, thank you for doing this for us, I'll get the benefits. No, it is your resurrection. A number one step that you need to take in your life is to demand this personal encounter with the risen Lord. Viewing his wounds, seeing his risen body, and seeing yourself in him. Without this personal encounter, this demand that, Lord, show me your wounds. Lord, show me that you're risen for me. Show me that I am risen in you. We will have a life of just religious practices. Without this personal encounter, we become like any other religion that just observe some rituals, feels good about themselves when they do these rituals and go home and still feel good about themselves. So it is a self-centered kind of circle that we live in. And then last Sunday, in order to nourish this life, we heard about the Lord, he is the bread of life. It is him that we eat, that we, that we grow, that we hunger for. And today is the same, the living water. It's him that we thirst for. It's him that he quenches our thirst. Throughout the readings this morning, there is a sense of logical conclusions. And I'll just use very few verses, maybe three verses. In the beginning of this story of the Samaritan woman, we, we, we read about Jesus that he needed to go through Samaria, through Samaria. He needed to go. He was compelled. He had no choice. And if you follow the thread of the readings, you will see that we have no choice either. We have no choice but to go. We have no choice but to change. So this story began with that he had no choice, he was compelled, and he needed to go to Samaria to meet this woman. At the end of the story, in verse 28, the woman did the same. The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the man, come see Christ. She was compelled, and she didn't even think about anything than getting rid of her burdens, getting rid of the water pot, and went her way. She was compelled. In the readings of the Pauline epistle to the Colossians, St. Paul 
makes the same argument. It's being compelled and we have no choice but. <clears throat> he said, if then you were raised with Christ, logical conclusion, seek those things which are above where Christ is. One plus one equals two. If you say that you're risen, then why are you really still stuck here? Go. Go seek what is above. Go tell. Go live. And go lead a different life that follows the risen Lord. It is no-brainer. And this is the kind of uh, golden thread in the... Uh, in, in these readings, and I would encourage you to read it when you go home, the readings of this morning. There is no brainer. Jesus was compelled to go to save that woman. That woman, when she met Christ, no brainer. She left her water pot, and she went to minister and to tell them about this experience. And I'm sure that she had no idea about the word ministry or preaching or service. And maybe this is where we get stuck with. We think about service that it is something that is so official, that is like something that I should be asked, that it is a very structured way of service. But no, this woman encountered Christ. Like Thomas, he witnessed his wounds and he believed. She, she sat with Christ, he touched her heart, and then no brainer, without any invitation, without any word of, official word of service, ministry, preaching, she went and she was compelled to tell her story that come and see, I, I met the Messiah. The same St. Paul, if you were raised with Christ, if you claim, if you believe, if you're here now and you believe in the resurrection, therefore, no brainer. Think about things above. Why you're still stuck here? Why you're still dealing with your God as just one of many, many, many things that you do while being busy in this life? A person who is risen, do not get stuck with the dead. A person who, who is really risen have, has a different view of their life and people and their ministry and their, and their being compelled to do this ministry. I'll just share one last verse from 1 Corinthians 9, verse 16. St. Paul talks about um, his desire and also being compelled to serve. He said that, for if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. It is nothing that I would brag about. It is nothing that it is, it's an extra layer uh, or something I would add to my resume. If I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast for, for necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. If you replace the word preach by just living your Christian risen life and feeling compelled to tell, to live out your, your faith, it is the same. Woe to me. In Arabic, if I am going to be able to do it, it is not a problem. It is 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 ما أقدرش ما بشرش ما أقدرش ما أقدرش أعيش مش عارف أكلم عربي ما أقدرش ما أعيش صح I cannot not serve I cannot not live 
as a risen believer with the Lord. This is what we are called for. Everyone, everyone. At the end of the liturgy, you all wait for the water, right? You all wait for this final blessing. Go in peace, peace be with you. Is it you for your own self-centered life? No. Go with this mission. Go take the love of the Father. Go take the grace of the Son. Go take the, the gifts and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and go out and share them with other people. If you were raised with Christ, then ask what is above. When you get sprinkled with the water at the end of the liturgy, it is not to refresh you, but it is to refresh your spirit and go with the power and the energy of the Holy Spirit, the living water that we heard about this morning, that you will go and you will quench the thirst of other people by preaching and serving, not necessarily, but just by being a risen human being, seeking the things above and living according to the things above. So my idea this morning, your celebration of the resurrection must be different. It is not by observing the Zephyr and just go around and take pictures or feeling happy that it is we're doing Zephyr. No, it is, it is a reminder that when we go outside of this world, uh, I mean, when we go outside of this church, our duty to the world is to go around and spread the joy of the resurrection. By being Christian, by being kind, by being loving, by being forgiving, by not acting like everybody acts, by being different, by being compelled to go and tell people, hey, I met Christ, he changed my life. This is why I am changed now. This is why I am a different person now. الضرورة موضوعة علي فوين لي إن كنت لا أبشر الكلام ده كل واحد فينا صغير وكبير across the board وين لي إن كنت لا أبشر ما أقدرش ما أخدمش ما أقدرش ما عش صح I just can't if you read uh, Colossians from this morning reading, you will get the idea. I cannot partake and live like the world is living. I just can't because I'm risen. To him all glory forever.